Hey guys, it's Jill and welcome to my booktube channel. This video is going to be another 24 hour reading vlog. I've done this two other times and both of those previous times, it took me literally a month to film those. I don't want to take another month to do this video, so I'm hoping that I can do this in like four-ish days. We'll see if I'm able to. And the way that I've liked doing this in the past is using the timer method. So I have a 24-hour timer and then I will pause the timer when I'm not reading and then continue the timer when I am reading. And it does take a little bit longer than just doing 24 hours of course consecutively but i feel like this way it allows me to read some more books and i don't know i've just done that in the past so i'm going to continue that way this is going to be a spoiler free reading vlog so any of the books mentioned i will not be talking about any spoilers i'll kind of just talk vaguely about the things happening in the book or anything that is like within the blurb on the backs. So I'm going to get started with To Kill a Kingdom. I've gotten a few chapters in, I'm on page 85, and I'll be honest, I'm not super drawn into the story yet, so I don't have too much to say about it, but I will do an update very soon. I have 22 hours and 42 minutes left basically 23 hours still i barely made a dent at all yesterday but i did get a little bit more into to kill a kingdom i'm just over halfway at this point on chapter 26 page 204 and in this book we have dual pov the fmc is lyra and she is a siren and then the mmc is elian who's a prince that hunts sirens so it's kind of the trope of i'm supposed to kill you but and i think it's a fantasy like romance i'm pretty sure those two are supposed to end up together but thus far there hasn't really been much going on in the romance department but at this point there's kind of more of that forced proximity so i feel like that might happen sooner than later lyra is forced to become a human and her mother the sea witch is it called the sea witch no the sea queen sorry she transforms her into a human as a punishment for doing this bad thing and in addition as another consequence she can't use her singing voice anymore which i guess for sirens is kind of what lures people into being close with them and then the sirens can kill the humans or whatever so she can't sing anymore but at first i was a little bit confused because i thought she couldn't speak at all like in the little mermaid movie in tail but she can talk, but she just can't sing. So Lyra has to captivate this Prince Elian and kill him to prove to her mother, the Sea Queen, that she isn't a traitor, essentially. Um, I've honestly been finding this pretty slow and a bit difficult to connect to the characters. I feel like it'll probably be around the three-star range that I end up rating this one. There's been a little bit of training scenes between the FMC and the MMC, which I feel like some people really like in fantasy romances. But thus far, I personally just don't really see the chemistry between Lyra and Prince Elian, which I did expect that I would by this point because I don't have that much left of the book. I have like, I don't know how many pages it is even. Maybe like 350-ish and on page 205, four. So I have only like 150 pages left and I just don't think they're really that great together. I don't know. I did consider at one point potentially DNFing this, but I think I'm going to push through and just finish it off so that I can get this one out of the way and start another one. Or actually I have a few books on the go right now, so I'll probably just continue one of those ones later. I finished To Kill a Kingdom and I have 21 hours and 28 minutes left of this challenge. I honestly just was not a huge fan of this book overall. There was a reveal at the end which was pretty inevitable if you kind of know the story of The Little Mermaid and I just thought that it kind of fell flat and it was also very sudden and kind of random it seemed like. I also anticipated that her inability to sing 
and use her siren powers was going to be way more of a problem than it ended up being. I feel like she only mentioned one time how she couldn't use her siren voice or whatever and just the romance was not doing it for me. I didn't see the connection between the characters. I felt like they didn't even really spend that much time together. So unfortunately, this wasn't the best book to start off this video with and I'm going to rate it a two and a half star, I think. It will be two stars on Goodreads, of course, because you can't do half stars. But I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to continue with Queen of Shadows. I did start this, I'm only 45 pages in. This is the little bookmark that I have for it. It is letterpress and it says rather be here. If you can see that, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. But I'm going to get this one started. I don't really have much to say so far because I'm barely in it, but I will update you guys soon. Hi guys, so I have 17 hours and 12 minutes and 27 seconds left of this challenge. I got a lot more into Queen of Shadows. I'm now on page 244. It's kind of hard to update with this one since it is the fourth book of the series and this is a spoiler free reading vlog so I can't say too much so I'm going to wait to kind of talk about how I feel about this one until I have a little bit more to say. But I also did finish another book on my kindle and it was Glow of the Everflame. I actually just took it off of my kindle so I can't even show. This one was the second book of the Spark of the Everflame series. Um, I think it's actually called The Kindred's Curse Saga. There are four books. The fourth book is coming out July 1st. And this one, I thought I liked it a lot better than the first when I first started it. And then I feel like it kind of slowed down and I just wasn't as interested in picking it up. So I honestly feel like I liked it kind of the same as the first book of this series. And to put it as vaguely as I can, the main female character is kind of forced into a role that she really did not expect and didn't prepare for and doesn't necessarily want. I felt a little back and forth with this one. There were some aspects that I really enjoyed, but then a lot of parts I was kind of like, okay, like let's get on with this. I am getting a little bit slightly bored. I also felt like it was pretty long. It was 600 and something, I think like 635 pages. And just felt pretty long reading it as opposed to this book, it's pretty long but I feel like when I'm reading it, it's going by really fast and I'm able to get through it pretty quickly. Also the FMC, her name is DM, I don't think I said that, but DM, she is also trying to kind of figure out where her loyalties lie and who she can trust, can't trust. It was slightly frustrating because I felt like she kind of kept going back and forth with her opinions and her thoughts of who she did and didn't hate and who was her enemy versus who wasn't her enemy. It was a little bit too much back and forth, I felt like. Also, in terms of the love triangle, it was very obvious to me, based on her inner monologue, who she was going to end up with and who wasn't the man for her. So I felt like, I don't know if there was supposed to be kind of more mystery or like who she going to choose with that one, but it was pretty clear as day who the choice was going to end up being. And this book on Goodreads it does have the tag for fantasy romance. So I anticipated that there would be a good amount of romance. But honestly, I feel like it's been a little bit too slow burn for me. And after two books, you think it would be kind of more clear with their relationship. Sorry if that's too much of a spoiler. I'm trying to be pretty vague about things. There was a fighting scene though that I did feel like was well done. I didn't expect what happened. I knew what the outcome would be, but how everything played out was not the way that I expected it was going to be. So that was a good part of it. The ending also was a good cliffhanger and it was also pretty surprising. It kind of makes you unsure of which characters you can trust and it makes you question what's really going on behind the scenes with this one mission of this one group in particular. Overall though, I'm giving it three stars and I'm not really sure if I want to continue with the series or not. I feel like I'll take a break from it for now and maybe I'll go back to it later. I'm just not super into it and for both book one and two, I think I gave them both three stars so I don't really have much motivation to continue but I'm just going to soft DNF that series for now and then I possibly will come back to it maybe when the fourth book comes out. I might read the third and fourth book together. But we'll see about that one and I feel like that's probably going to be all of my reading for today. And I'll continue with the timer for the next few days until I finish. I know I said in the intro that I wanted to get this done in four days 
and I swear I said that in another video when I did this 24 hour video in the past I said the same thing about wanting to finish it in four days but it's just like so hard to do unless you literally sit down and do nothing else which I feel like I need to eat and walk my dog and do other things that are like also important so I can't just like literally read for 12 hours straight or for like six hours straight even in one day anyways that's over explaining it more of the story doing the timer method with this at least it always takes me longer than i want slash expect so it is a challenge for sure but i will talk to you guys soon with my next update Right now I have 13 hours and 54 minutes left on the timer and I started The Housemaid is Watching which is Frieda McFadden's newest release. I think it just released the other day on the 11th I believe. One thing that I really like about Frieda McFadden's books is that I can just fly through them. Her books are very easy to grasp and read so I just read them pretty fast and I wouldn't even necessarily say that I'm a fast reader in general but in this book Millie, our FMC, she is finally able to live the life that she's kind of been dreaming of with her family and they just moved into this beautiful new house and a very nice neighborhood. Her neighbors are kind of sketchy though and they also don't really seem to like each other. They kind of both have bad blood, not explained why, but seems like a little bit of tension there because they each keep talking badly about one another. And then the one neighbor also is kind of trying to hit on Millie's husband, Enzo, and Enzo is kind of playing along too, which is annoying. And I've been finding that Enzo's a little out to lunch in this one. I did like him in the previous books, but in this one, I'm kind of finding myself really annoyed with him. There are a few instances where Millie is treating their housemaid not very nicely, similar to how Millie was treated when she was a housemaid. And there are moments where she's kind of acting like the rude wife, which I didn't really expect because she had that experience. So she kind of knows what it's like to be the housemaid on the receiving end but she's still acting that way, so it's kind of strange. So far, I'm enjoying this, and I like how fast-paced and how quick of a read this is. I feel like I can definitely finish this today within the next few hours, so my next update will likely be when I finish this. Hi guys, I just finished The Housemaid is Watching, and now I have 12 hours and 46 minutes left of this challenge. I also just finished recording my thoughts on The Housemaid is Watching, as well as an outro to my bookish blog. So hopefully this isn't too repetitive, but I did want to go into a little bit more detail in this video about my thoughts on the book. So for these housemaid books, all of them have had a very specific formula that Frida McFadden writes in, where at the end you get a perspective from a character that's been in the book the whole time, but you never knew what was going on in their head and everything. And that's where they kind of list out the reasoning for whatever they did. I definitely suspected the wrong character literally the entire book and I didn't guess any of the twists either. Overall, I'm going to give this three stars. I feel like I just won't ever give Freedom McFadden books like four or five stars just because of the writing, which I've talked about before. I just feel like the writing is a little bit too simple and straightforward. The last thing I do want to say about this book that it didn't really seem like it would necessarily be in this whole housemaid series if it weren't for the main character, Millie. Because other than that, the whole housemaid part, it wasn't like a huge part of this story, if that makes sense. So it didn't exactly seem very fitting for this series, I found. But regardless, it was a pretty good read and I would recommend if you're looking for a quick, easy to read thriller. I think if I read any more today, I'll probably just read Queen of Shadows by SJM. And I will update you guys more on that when I probably, when I finish that book. I hit past the halfway point of this challenge and I have 11 hours and 50 minutes left. I'm on page 470 of Queen of Shadows and I'm at a part where one character feels like it's their opportunity to intervene to do something which was not part of this whole plan and I just know it's going to backfire and I feel like this character has good intentions but it's just going to be a huge mess and then everyone else is going to have to pick up the pieces of the repercussions and the consequences of this guy's actions and I just don't think it's going to end very well for them. It's also the point of the book where the two separate stories are starting to merge together which it just barely has so far but it definitely will very soon I feel like in this upcoming chapter. Okay so I was kind of right I'm now on chapter 61 page 486 
and i was honestly really surprised with how this last chapter ended but based off of what happened at the end of this chapter i'm really eager to see what happens in the rest of the book i want to finish this tonight i don't know if i'll be able to but i'm really going to try that is all i have to say for now i'm going to update again soon if something happens or at the end of this book when i'm done it hi guys it's been a few days since i've last done a checkup and i'm also at my parents house so the background will look different for the rest of this video but i finished queen of shadows i'm going to give this four stars i really enjoyed it i found that this book had a lot of good action as well as set up for the next books without being too slow really i felt like i read this pretty quickly even though it took me a little bit i feel like I started this a while ago but it didn't when i was reading it it didn't feel slow to me and i also liked that the ending wasn't super cliffhangery because i don't think i'll be able to pick up the next two books which is the tandem read which i'm a little bit intimidated to start but i do think i will do the tandem read which will be quite the task i'm sure but i am excited for that but i don't think i'll be able to pick up those books anytime soon so because of that i am glad this didn't end where i needed to pick up the next books immediately i've really been enjoying the throne of glass universe and all of the characters and the plot and just everything that's been going on is so interesting to me and in terms of my timer i'm at 10 hours and 8 minutes that i have left and i think i'm going to either pick up the women by kristen hannah which i got for my mom for mother's day and she finished it loved it gave it five stars so i'm interested in reading that because it's also a genre that i haven't read before but then i'm also kind of interested in reading autobiography which is the book that i picked up in my last video if you saw at the thrift store and that is by christina lauren so i feel like i would also enjoy that one but i haven't yet decided which one i do want to pick up so i'll figure that out soon On chapter 12 now page 198 i'm a little bit i think i'm actually just halfway through and with my timer i have eight hours and 28 minutes left still so in this novel there's the mmc there's actually two mmc's there's tanner who is like the main character i would say more so but then there's also sebastian so tanner lives in provo utah and he and his family is not lds but this area is a very densely populated LDS community. And the other guy, Sebastian, he is LDS. His family is very involved with the church. His dad is a bishop, I think that's what it's called. And Sebastian is this mentor slash TA for the special writing class in high school that Tanner's in. And Tanner's in his senior year of high school. And I'm not sure how old Sebastian is. I think he might be one year older than him based off of like context clues but i'm not exactly sure and sebastian's helping out with this class because he was previously in this class and wrote this amazing book that's actually about to be published very soon so he's kind of prepping for that as well i do feel like the relationship was rushed just a little bit by page 80 they were kind of together at that point which i felt like was a little bit faster than i would have preferred and there was also something that tanner told sebastian very very early on i think it was like their second time meeting which surprised me because this was something that he hasn't even told one of his very best friends even so i felt like that would have been better executed maybe if it was kind of later on in the story that he told sebastian other than that i do really like how tanner and his family his mom and dad and sister are just a very tight-knit close family and just that he can be so honest and open with his mom and dad a topic that's pretty prevalent in this book which i mentioned previously but that is religion since tanner's mom used to be lds but has since left the church which causes a little bit of confusion and questions of other families and just people in the community because like i said this area that they live in most people are lds so for the people that aren't lds tanner and his family it's kind of obvious and they stand out a little bit for the fact that they don't follow the church so in terms of this writing class tanner has to write a novel by the end of the semester which is four months and he thinks it's really easy that it's going to be a piece of cake to write essentially but after he started to write it he ended up kind of writing a story that pretty much mirrored what he's been experiencing 
currently which i'm not sure whether or not that will be a good or bad thing and of course he's been getting the help of sebastian to write this novel and he's been giving him some input as well which i honestly feel like hasn't been super helpful with that but i feel like that's mostly a side plot anyway so doesn't really matter with tanner and sebastian's relationship i am a little bit unsure how that will really work but i really hope that they'll be able to figure it out because i think they're cute together and that they would make a good couple but other than that that is all that i have to say and i'll do a final update once i finish this book hi guys i just finished autobiography and i have seven hours and 11 minutes still left on my timer i feel like this challenge is and i say this every single time i do this but this challenge is so hard because it's just a long time to be reading especially doing it the timer method where you just stop and start every single time that you pick up a book i think i started this around the 10th of june and now it's the 20th so it's almost been two weeks and yeah this is just definitely a difficult challenge for me every single time but to kind of wrap up this book there was one thing that happened between tanner and his best friend i personally just didn't think it was super necessary and then what happened afterwards was also kind of strange to me so i wasn't a huge fan of that aspect there were also many things that sebastian said to tanner which were pretty frustrating to read at the time but considering the whole situation and the context of everything it definitely made sense overall though i'm going to give this book three stars and i do feel like it was a good coming of age novel which focused on identity a lot i would recommend this one so I still have, like I said, 7 hours and 11 minutes and I feel like I'm kind of in a fantasy romance mood so I think that I'll pick up A Fate Inked in Blood I got this one near the start of the year and I haven't picked it up yet and I brought the copy here with me at my parents' house so I think I'm going to start that one next Okay guys, I'm on chapter 20 and I'm a little bit more than halfway through this book and on page 224 So with the fate inked in blood, our FMC Freya, she has had magic but her father's told her to hide her magic abilities for literally her whole life until the start of this book when it's discovered that she does have this magic which was gifted by the gods or something or like she contains the blood of a certain god something like that and the reasoning that her father told her to hide her magic was because he said that if it was discovered then people would use her for her magic essentially so because at the start it was discovered that she has this magic she is forced into this arranged marriage which i'm not exactly sure why she had to do this i'm sure it was explained but maybe it just kind of went over my head and i forgot but she is forced to marry the king of this one area and with these magical powers she's supposed to help this kingdom fight a place called nordland and her official kind of job title i guess is a shield maiden so based off of what i've read so far i feel like she can shield off of like other attacks by other people the way that i've kind of been imagining it is a little bit like bella from breaking dawn how she was able to kind of like extend her shield out to protect her people and her family and whatnot so since they must prepare for the war against nordland freya has to do a training and kind of help learn her magic which i feel like i honestly haven't seen too many training scenes so that's been a little bit pushed to the side but in addition to training she also has to go to this one place and do a ritual before the full moon for some reason i don't know why but we have of course the mmc which the way that the fmc and mmc are connected is very strange but anyways it's kind of a forced proximity situation where the mmc is the bodyguard of the fmc freya so they're kind of traveling along together to get to the place for this ritual and the mmc is also the one that's training her if i didn't already say that before but if i'm being honest i'm not really seeing a huge amount of chemistry between the fmc and the mmc and that might be because it's kind of a slow burn romance situation i feel like because i'm more than halfway through and not too much has happened in that department and it could also be because this is the first book of a series so the romance might just be a super slow burn and then happen more in the later books but so far i'm not super invested in really anything unfortunately especially the relationship i'm just not i'm not seeing it so i'm going to finish this up but i'll give a final summary of my thoughts at the end of this book and in terms of the timer i have four hours and 47 minutes left i think i'll be able to finish this and then i feel like i might continue with the ku book that i've been reading for a few weeks now and i just haven't really continued so i will talk really soon
Alrighty, so it's time to wrap this one up. And I honestly did not enjoy this. It was low-key painful to get through. I did consider whether or not I wanted to DNF it, but I kind of just powered through it. But I was really excited when I finished it because I thought there was 440 pages, but there ended up only being 417, I think. But anywho, what happened in here in terms of the romance, it was just so unconvincing. I felt like the FMC and the MMC barely even talked the whole time. And then when the love proclamation came, I was like scratching my head because I was like, I feel like you haven't even had a full conversation with each other yet. So it just was not convincing for me at least. And I mean, there were some cute quotes, I'll give them that. But there's also a weird quote in there. There's one quote where he says that he wants her to be fat with the baby. It was really weird. But yeah, to say the least, I was not a fan of the romance aspect of this. And even the plot, I felt like it was pretty weak. And there just didn't seem to be much progression at all with the plot, the entire story really. Which was a little bit frustrating to read because I'm like, okay, like, when is something going to happen? But then... It never really happened which was odd because at the start there were a lot of different plans that they wanted to happen and then none of those plans followed through so i don't really know what happened with that and then the fmc something happens to her and the mmc brushed it off so casually and literally just didn't care at all which was kind of weird but he was kind of justifying it saying that it's for her own good but yeah, I was just like not a fan. I will say though, I didn't expect the events that happened at the end, which were a huge cliffhanger. And I don't know when the next book's coming out, but I don't think I'm going to pick it up honestly, because I'm just not attached to these characters or the story really at all. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to sadly give this a two star rating, which I think might be my lowest rating for fantasy romance. So that's super disappointing. But to continue with this challenge, I still have three hours and six minutes left. So I'm going to read on my Kindle and read Love Redesigned, which I'm like 18% of the way through, I believe, 20% of the way through. And I started that, I think, 10 days ago, so almost two weeks at this point. It seems okay, but I'm not like super obsessed with it that clearly it's been almost two weeks at this point since I've picked it up. So I will continue with that though, and it will probably be tomorrow when I do my final update. Hi guys, so I literally have 40 minutes left of this challenge and I did want to do a little update though because I started with Love Redesigned. This was a kind of second chance, childhood best friends to lovers, contemporary romance. However, I did decide to DNF this one at around 23% because I found the MMC to be very weirdly possessive over the FMC and I just am not a huge fan of that and I honestly just didn't think I could deal with 400 more pages of that. It was really just giving me the ick because these two people haven't even really talked for many many years and then once they're together he just decides that he can be acting that way. No, it was just not for me. But the plot of this was the FMC, Dahlia, and the MMC, I think his name was Julian? They are working together to fix up this house and she is an interior designer I believe and I think he's like a contractor or a developer or something like that. Anyways, I read a little bit of that and DNF'd it because I was just feeling super slumpy and unmotivated to read anymore. But then I picked up Before I Let Go and I've heard so many amazing things about this. This one's a second chance romance. It seems like I haven't finished it so I can't say for sure but that's the kind of vibe I'm getting and the FMC and the MMC previously went through very hard times there were multiple things that happened to them that were just awful and as a result of those events the FMC had really bad depression which ended up having her to ask her husband for a divorce and at that point they had two kids so where this story takes place is two years afterwards where they're kind of just dealing with the co-parenting dynamics while also having new situations arise with this whole co-parenting thing and with them being exes and stuff but they also own a restaurant together so they have to co-parent the kids and also run this restaurant business together which seems like it honestly would kind of suck to do that and i started off i would say the first five chapters really loving this and i was honestly getting five star feelings which as i continue reading has since waned but this does really remind me of all your perfects by colleen hoover there's some aspects i feel like that are kind of intertwined or not intertwined but kind of mirror that book and i do have a lot more to say about my thoughts and feelings of before i let go but i think i'm going to finish off the timer first and then i will discuss a little bit more of this book with you guys a 
I'm so relieved that I finally finished this 24 hour reading challenge even though this time only took me two weeks instead of a month for the last two times I did this challenge it still felt like a pretty long time but I got 69% of the way through before I let go and I'm going to now tell you how I feel about it so I like the premise of the story in the plot and I like the main female character her name is Yasmin and she just has gone through so much and I feel like she's a very strong character and is well developed however I was not a fan of the main male character and I felt like his intentions were always just like based on the physical connection that he had with her and I swear every time because it was dual POV every time we were in his POV he would always make a comment about her body and it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way I feel like I definitely got sick with reading in his POV very quickly and there were also many things that he said to Yasmin too that I just don't think were appropriate and were just really rude so I wasn't a huge fan of him to say the least and I feel like so far he's kind of ruined this story for me unfortunately and I just honestly don't think that they're really a good fit for each other pretty much every time they interact they're arguing about something and if they're not arguing about something they're just thinking about each other in like a physical way which I just think is not enough for them to be together in my opinion and I feel like they just don't communicate with each other very well and even now after being more than halfway through this I feel like at this point I should be rooting for the main characters to be together but he has even in the last few chapters said some things and I'm like why would Yasmin even want to be with him like I just personally don't get it and I'm not a fan of this MMC clearly but since I haven't yet finished this book in the time that I had I will talk about my final feelings and do my rating in my monthly reading wrap up so stay tuned for that but so far I'm feeling like it's probably not going to be a super high rating just based on my feelings now which really sucks because I think I mentioned in a previous clip that when I first started this book I honestly got five star feelings so I'm pretty disappointed that I definitely don't have those feelings anymore but yeah those are my thoughts for now on before I let go and that is going to be the end of this video thank you guys so much for watching this 24 hour reading vlog if you've read any of the books mentioned I would love to hear your thoughts on them in a comment down below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more book content and I will see you guys in a new video next week. Bye!